Here we're told to simplify the following, and we're not supposed to use a calculator. So, square root of 900. Well, you might know that 900 is 30 times 30, which is 30 squared. So the square root of 900 is simply 30. If you didn't know that, there's another way you can get there. The square root of 900 is the square root of 9 times 100. We simply take the 900 and factor it. And if you have the square root of one thing times another thing, that's simply the square root of the first thing times the square root of the next thing. And you should know that the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 100 is 10. So this is equal to 3 times 10, which is 30. So if it's not something that you immediately know, then taking the thing under the radical and factoring it is often pretty helpful. Sometimes you can find, like we did here, perfect square factors that, that can then be taken out from under the radical and square rooted. So this 9 simply got square rooted and became a 3. And the same thing happened over here. The 100 became a 10. In this next example, the square root of 200, I can rewrite that as the square root of 2 times 100. Now the idea is that any perfect square factors that you find under the radical can and should be brought out of the radical. And when this 100 pops out from under the radical, it becomes a 10. The square root gets taken. The square root of 100 is 10. So instead of writing the 100 under the radical, where it means the square root of the 100, I can take it out and just make it a 10. So this becomes a 10. And I still have my 2 under the radical. So 10 times the square root of 2. That's my answer. This next example, square root of 150. Well, I don't know off the top of my head what that's going to be. But I do know that 150 is 2 times 75. So let's write it that way. This is the square root of 2 times 75. And I know that 75 is 3 times 25. So let's rewrite this again, and we'll write it as 2 times. And now instead of 75, I'm going to write 3 times 25. And 25, you recognize as a perfect square. 25 is 5 times 5, or 5 squared. So the 25 can pop out from under the radical. It becomes a 5. Instead of having the square root of 25, I'll just have a 5. So I'll write it that way. I have a 5 now outside of the radical instead of the 25 under the radical. And the 2 and the 3 are not perfect squares, so they're going to stay under the radical. And I'll go ahead and combine them to a 6. 5 times the square root of 6. That's my answer. And over here, the square root of 180 I'll proceed with this one in a similar manner. 180 is 2 times 90. So instead of the square root of 180, I have the square root of 2 times 90. 90 is 2 times 45. So instead of 2 times 90, I have 2 times 2 times 45. Now 45, I know, is 9 times 5. So let's rewrite this again as... 2 times 2 times 9 times 5. Now, what can happen? Look at this. 2 times 2, that's 2 squared. So instead of having that 2 squared under the radical, I can have the 2 outside the radical. And this 9 right here, the 9 is a 3 squared. So instead of having a 3 squared under the radical, I can have a 3 outside the radical. So I have another 3, so this is 2 times 3 outside the radical. And this 5 is not a perfect square. It's going to stay under the radical. So I have 2 times 3 times the square root of 5, which is equal to 6 times the square root of 5.